Okay, welcome everyone. This is Scott here again with a new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I'll be showing you some research that I did that will demonstrate just how often the short strangle option trading strategy turns a profit. And by extension, this will also show just how powerful a high probability based option trading strategy really is. And so as always, before we get started here, for those of you who are new to the channel, I just wanna let you know that I do also teach on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two week free trial. Okay, so let's get started here. And just as a brief example, in case you are not too familiar with the short strangle option trading strategy, this is basically a combination of selling both an out of the money put option and also an out of the money call option. So in the case of Marvel technology here, this would definitely be a good candidate for a short strangle. One, because the stock is a bit range bound for the moment and also the implied volatility for the stock is still pretty elevated, right? You can see the IV rank is at 50% and the IV percentile is at 60%. And so this means the options on Marvel are a bit more expensive than usual, and therefore it's advantageous to be selling them. So we can come over to the trade tab real quick, and I'll close out the June cycle here, just because there's not too many days left in that expiration cycle. So let's look at the July cycle now. So as a brief example, if I were to sell a strangle on this stock, which I will most likely do anyway come the earnings announcement very soon, I would probably choose the 52 and a half strike call option and also the 41 strike put option. And you would collect about 200 bucks in credit for selling this one strangle. So of course the idea here is by the expiration date is for the stock to end up somewhere in between these strikes, anywhere above 41 bucks per share and also below 52 and a half, right? Because anywhere in this range come the expiration date, both these options will expire worthless. They'll just disappear and you'll get to walk away and keep the full 200 bucks in credit. And so this is actually my favorite kind of option trading strategy. The majority of the trades I make are short strangles. And that's because I have found that they are so effective. They give you a very high probability of profit. And they're also great for taking advantage of very high implied volatility. And so now what I've done here as part of my research to figure out just how often these strategies turn a profit is I've taken every single one of my trades, all of my strangle trades that is, and in case you haven't seen the spreadsheet before, I have shown it in a few of my other videos, but this is where I log every single trade that I make for each month. And as you can see, I have them organized by their position category. So here, for example, in the month of May, these are all the strangles that I have on so far. And so using these spreadsheets, and if I now come over here, I have written a basic Go application, just a simple computer program that will read through those spreadsheets for each month, and it will import those trades into a database on my computer. And then from there, I can write queries that will analyze the data in however I want. So finally, coming over here now, this is an application called PG Admin, and it simply offers a nice clean UI, a user interface to interact with my database on my computer. And up here in this text box, this is where I can write my queries. So for example, this query right here will simply pull every single record from my database about the trades I have logged in there. So I can highlight this and I'll click play. And there we go, if I pull this up a bit more, you can see down here with the output, I have the exact same kind of data in the same format as in my spreadsheet, right? We have the position identifier, the underlying asset, the strikes, the strike width, expiration date, so on and so forth, just like in my spreadsheet. Again, position identifier, underlying strikes, strike width, so on and so forth. It's the same thing. I simply like to have this data in a database because it makes it a lot easier to analyze and manipulate the data with queries as opposed to trying to do the same thing in a spreadsheet. It's a lot more difficult to analyze data in a spreadsheet. So coming back now, and let's do one more query here as an example. Okay, so this query here is simply going to count the number of trades I've made that are strangles where I entered that trade after July 1st of 2020. And I picked this date in particular because after this point, that's when my data started to become a lot more clean. So if I highlight this now and click play, you can see here I have made 167 strangle trades since July of 2020. And so this is the number of trades that I'll be analyzing here today in this video to figure out just how many of them actually turned a profit. 
And just to clarify here, when I say turn to profit, I mean without any management. I have found that oftentimes when I do start adjusting my strangles because my strikes get breached, for example, or if I just cut my losses at some point, I have learned that had I not done any of that and just waited till the expiration date, the stock would have come all the way back around and ended up as a full winner. And through this research, that is why I am trying to tweak my trading strategy a bit to allow the stock as much freedom to move as possible all the way until the expiration date, but at the same time eliminating the very few massive outliers. And I'll talk more about that here in a second. So again, the point of this research in this video is just to see how often a strangle by itself, no management whatsoever, would actually turn a profit by the expiration date. So let's write one more query here. Okay, so here is the next query I'm going to run and definitely don't worry about what this all means. It's the output that matters. So let's go ahead and click play. And there we go, I'll drag this up a little bit here. So now you can see that amongst all these strangles that I put on since July 1st of 2020, just simply doing nothing, just putting on the strangle and letting the trade go all the way until the expiration date, of those 167 strangles, 146 would have been profitable. Only 21 would have been losses which means the overall win rate was just over 87%. Right currently this win rate is being quoted as a decimal, so 0 0.874, et cetera, et cetera. But as a percentage, this is 87%. And that is a pretty powerful finding here. Simply selling an out of the money call option and an out of the money put option and then doing nothing, just waiting until the expiration date, you would have made money on 87% of those trades. And the very cool thing here is if I write another query, Right, so this one here is going to calculate the average probability of profit amongst all those strangles since July 1st of 2020. And so if I click play here, and if I expand this out, right, you'll see the average probability of profit was just over 70%. And this is what I normally target. Whenever I sell a strangle, I'm usually around a 70-ish percent probability of profit. And in case you're wondering how to actually figure out your probability of profit on any option trading strategy, I do have a separate video explaining just that. So I'll post a card above linking to it so you can watch it later. But it's very interesting to see that if I usually target around a 70% chance of making money on any given strangle, and yet over 87% of them actually turn to profit. So what explains this discrepancy here? Well, the answer for that is implied volatility. Implied volatility, the vast majority of the time is overstated. And in case you don't know, the implied volatility is what is used to figure out your probability of profit. So ultimately, if the majority of the time implied volatility is overstated, this means that you will win on your short option strategies a lot more often than what the theoretical probabilities would tell you. So if based on the implied volatility, I would assume that I theoretically have about a 70% chance of profit on this trade, in reality, it's going to be much higher. And this is where the main edge lies in option trading. And specifically, it leans in favor for option sellers, right? Because I've heard from a lot of people that selling options is a zero-sum game and that you're only being paid just enough to cover the theoretical probability of profit that you're targeting. So that on average, as you continually selling options, you're just going to keep breaking even. But that's not true because the theoretical probabilities are incorrect. They're wrong. You are actually being paid more than you should because you actually have a much higher probability of making a profit than what your trading platform will tell you. So as an option seller, if you're being compensated more than you should be based on the risk you're taking, that means on average going forward, assuming you also use proper mechanics and risk management, you will be making money over time. And let me actually prove this here really quickly. So I'm going to write one more query. So this one here is just going to sum up the outcomes, either the profits or the losses of each of those 167 strangles. And again, this is all based on holding that strangle until the expiration date. So I'll go ahead and click play. And I'll expand this out one more time. And so there we go. The total combined outcome of all those strangles is a profit of $7,130. No management, no nothing. Just sell the strangle and wait until the expiration date. Selling options is 100% not a zero-sum game. Now, one more thing I want to show you here before wrapping up are the few cases where not managing your strangles at all led to very, very large losses. And this is why that even though not managing your strangles might be the best thing to do in the end, you still, in my view, cannot afford to do nothing when your position goes really, really far against you. 
So I'm gonna write one more query now. So this one here is just going to show you a few important metrics about every strangle I have made since July 1st of 2020. So I'll go ahead and run this one. And let me expand out these few columns. There we go. So here you can see all 167 strangles I made since July 1st, and they're sorted by the expiration profit or loss from greatest to least in terms of the biggest losses to the biggest win. So for example, looking at this one first, this strangle on Billy, I sold the 65 strike call option and the 40 strike put option. And had I held this strangle all the way until the expiration date, I would have lost $5,545. That's a massive, massive loss. But because of my mechanics, in this case, I cut losses at a certain point. In the end, I only lost $548, a very manageable loss. Same thing with plug power. I sold a 40 strike call option and a 22 strike put option. And had I held this position all the way till the expiration date, I would have lost almost $2,000. But because I cut losses early, I only lost $358 and so on and so forth. Moreover, as you can see, there's only about 10 total trades, 10 total strangles where if I did just hold them to the expiration date and had no management whatsoever, I would have had pretty nasty losses. But below this point, all the losses were very, very manageable. Only 300 bucks on VLO, 298 on XOP, and then all the rest are either very, very small losses, 90 bucks here, 46 bucks here, very small losses, and then the rest are all profits, or all would have been profits, I should say. Now, sometimes I did have to cut losses or adjust things too early, and that actually caused losses by the expiration date, whereas if I did nothing, I would have had profits. So this is the main area where I'm still trying to tweak and improve my trading strategy. I'm trying to figure out how I can hold on to a strangle for as long as possible, ideally all the way to the expiration date if need be, but at the same time having some mechanics in place to remove these very few massive, massive outlier events, right? I can't afford to sell a strangle on Billy for only 200 bucks in credit and lose over $5,000. That's not proper risk management. And so this is why in my live trading videos, you are seeing me test out a new approach where I'm basically buying or shorting stock as a hedge, a hedge against these kinds of strategies, strangles, naked puts, naked calls, etc., so that in situations like Billy or like plug power, if the stock did breach my strike and just never come back, if it just kept on going, I would never see losses like this. And in fact, based on my current approach with hedging using stock, had I used that approach with my Billy trade here, I would have been able to hold onto this trade all the way into the expiration date, giving it as much time as possible to come back, if it ever did. But at the same time, I only would have lost about $300, right? Again, I want to give my trades as much time as possible for the probabilities to play out, for the stock to come back in my favor. And in a few cases like Billy where it doesn't, I want to remove these massive, massive losses. So ultimately here, the key takeaway is when you are selling strangles or naked puts or naked calls, the best course of action is to not even touch the trade until the last possible moment. Simply doing nothing at all is most of the time the best course of action. But that being said, you still do need to have some mechanics in place, whether it's adjustments, cutting losses at certain points, whatever, so that you don't experience catastrophic losses like this. So with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out those Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.